So this one from Flagman64, interesting stuff. Why do you think frame limiters in PC games are often so poor, actually locking frame rates and frame times? There have been many times when I've had to enforce driver or RTS, RTSS level caps just to get a smooth experience. At one stage, Assassin's Creed 30 FPS cap was actually 31 FPS. FPS. How did that pass QA? Uh, John, what do you think about this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, that that is kind of a a common weird issue right like we've seen this before where like developers use some sort of weird arbitrary frame rate cap i think the cry engine 3 games were notorious for this on console uh -huh. yeah. um there's another examples coming off to the top of my head but yeah that that is very strange and it is a shame that we have to rely on external tools to solve this but i should say that i'm glad we have the external tools to solve this now which is the key takeaway like I remember when uh, Mafia 2 came out and I was using a Radeon card and it was oh, impossible to play it in full screen without some sort of weird pacing issues with the frame rate. Like the cap was just slightly off. So it just, the game couldn't look smooth. But at the time, there were no tools to fix this. So um, it is disappointing when things like this pass QA and they don't notice it and you end up with weird frame rate inconsistencies but again we can fix it these days most of the time and i think that's what's important the power is with the users in the pc space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i think um, vrr has actually made it so that you know you don't really need to worry too much about frame times on those frame rate limiters but it does require you to be in the vrr window that's right? true yes. that's so, actually you know, uh, okay, I got to do a little tangent here related to this. So while this isn't a huge issue for games nowadays, the rendering, it's a gigantic issue for full motion video playback because folks, <laughs> developers are still shipping games with FMV in it, right? For whatever reason, you know, it depends on there, there, there are valid reasons to use FMV, right? The problem is, is most games have a very poor video player. It's often bink based, but the actual playback is the problem, right? You get improperly paced video. The playback looks stuttery and horrible. The compression artifacts are severe. Uh, it just doesn't look right. And last year when I covered Final Fantasy 13, it kind of reminded me you play it on PS3, right? It's like Blu-ray movie format. There's no compression. The playback is 100% smooth all the time. It just looks pristine. When it looks that good, you're like, I don't mind these FMVs, right? It just it looks fine. It's very nice. Yeah. Uh, and we so rarely see that today, except for one recent example, Baldur's Gate 3. I was surprised when I loaded it up and they have this introduction movie. It played smoothly. It <laughs> was compression artifacts game. were not bad. It's a PC game. And the video playback was actually smooth. It's a miracle. I, I swear I've not seen this <laughs> in a long time. And this isn't even just a PC problem, it's even on consoles. Like, yeah, I still remember the first time I loaded up Assassin's Creed Origins, and I actually tested this recently. It's still the same. You hit new game. The first thing you see is a choppy, stuttery, ugly looking video. And I'm like, your gigantic, expensive AAA game. The first thing the user's going to see is this a bad video that plays incorrectly like i don't understand what went wrong here like video playback in games has gotten so much worse since i would say <laughs> like the, P the ps2 generation right ps2 it's just dvd right the videos are pristine on the displays they're designed for we lost that you don't get it now most games ship with just bad video playback and that sucks <laughs> I, I didn't end up covering Final Fantasy VII Remastered Remake, whatever, reimagined on PC, but um, the it's fine. It's pa it's paced fine on console, the intro yeah. cinematic as it goes the into video. the city, but on PC, it's all wrong, and it's filled with background <sighs> stutters, too, because they're, they're obviously bringing in assets during that time that don't have shaders compiled, so it's, it's shader yep. compilation stuttering the first time you play that cinematic while having the wrong cadence of frame delivery. Hilariously bad. Actually, uh, Unreal Engine itself is bad for this. UE4 is, yeah. doesn't play video as well. I found this myself. In fact, when I was building a test map, I was like, I want to map a video onto some structures for fun. And it was a side-scrolling thing, right? And I could not, for the, and maybe this is my own failing, but I could not for the life of me get the video playback to look stutter-free. Even when pre-rendering out the scene, uh, it's I just couldn't figure it out. And even doing a full screen playback of the video clip within the Unreal Editor, 
I just couldn't get it to look smooth. And yeah. I'm wondering if it just bumping up against issues with this, with the way video playback works and they can't solve it. That reminds okay, me so of, we, yeah. Sorry, just, just one little thing. It reminds me of the fact that Unreal Engine, I haven't tried it in Fortnite because I haven't tried out their frame rate limiter there yet. Uh, but up until at least Valley of the Ancients, the frame rate limiter in Unreal Engine 5, and that's including 4, all that before that, if you target it at 30 FPS, it will never be properly frame paced. Um, right. It's always wrong. And VRR uh, can't fix it either. It does yeah. not fix the video. Yeah. It doesn't, yeah, video is one thing, but that's not what Flagman 64 no, is. Talking I know, about. I know. No, I just, know, I know. It's just a rant. It seems because to have gone on a massive tangent here. But basically, you know, if you use um, a frame rate limiter and you're in a <laughs> VRR window, so essentially, you know, let's, let's, for the sake of argument, say you're above 48 uh, frames per second, it should just basically work. It's where you're outside of the VRR window where things can be a bit more problematic and where stuff like fo low frame rate compensation comes in. But Basically, if you're at 30 FPS, then things are sort of, you you know, not great. Now, there are a lot of games that get 30 FPS right. I've recently been uh, reviewing some handhelds, you can see them in the background there. And you kind of need 30 FPS on these things because, you know, they're 60 hertz panels. Um, and there are many, many games where if you choose the half rate uh uh, V-Sync option, it kind of just works as it should. Metro Exodus is a good example. Mm -hmm. uh, Flight Simulator uh, does it unless you hit CPU or GPU limits. Um, a whole bunch of games do 30 FPS right. Um, on NVIDIA side, obviously, people have been relying for a long time on the um, half-rate adaptive sync. And, but there's no sort of real thing that's happening on the AMD side to do this from on the on the driver level as you have with NVIDIA. And um, that's a bit of a problem. I might do a video on this. But um, here's the thing, right? This week I was playing The Last of Us Part 1 on uh, the A&EO 1S handheld. It's that beige thing in the background there. Oh, yeah. And the, the inbuilt 30 FPS limiter in that game does not work. You get inconsistent frame pacing with V-Sync on problem um now great thing about the df supporter program we've got some great people on there one of which is chaldean who does special k and he sort of piped up and said well you know okay uh, special k has um half rate v sync support give it a go so i did give it a go and it works this is the first time I've seen um, half rate adaptive, sorry, half rate V sync working on an AMD system outside of games that properly support it. And yeah, that solved the last of us problem there. And I was getting, you know, 30 FPS the way it should be, uh -huh. which I think is a, which is a pretty big deal, right? Because like it or not, games are moving on to the next level. And, um, uh, there's a lot of GPUs out there that will still be good for 30 FPS, but not much more than that on these cutting edge games. And I guess The Last of Us Part 1 running on a handheld is probably a pretty good example of that. And it does actually work. And he's got some really interesting options in, in there, like a sort of custom V-Sync off mode, which does lock to or rather target 30 frames per second, but it flips the frame buffer during the V-blank period. So typically you get low, uh, sorry, high latency with half rate uh, V-Sync options, but this is actually running with V-Sync off. And um, uh, I had limited success with uh, the capture output of the handheld there because um, for various reasons, the sync issues weren't lining up, but it seemed to work um, with the primary display. Mm -hmm. So this is actually quite interesting. I'm, I'm going to do a bit of capture here on an AMD GPU on a desktop system, directly look, hooked up to a capture device here using that sort of adaptive V-Sync off thing. And in theory, you know, well, if it works, it works. You'll see some nice capture playing out here. If it doesn't, well, maybe it, it it's still work in progress, but half rate uh, V-Sync definitely works. And this is really, really interesting for, you know, getting more out of your GPU for longer um, and still having a playable experience. But yes, I don't know about, go back to Flagrad 64's question, dodgy frame rate caps. Yeah, it's it's not really a big deal as long as you're in the VRR window, but outside of it, it is problematic and maybe there should be a bit more work done on that. So, you know, for example, The Last of Us probably shouldn't have shipped with that uh, particular yeah. solution when so many games do manage to get it right these days.